Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Bob Siebold. I'm a past monarch of Tripopet Grotto and currently the vice president of the Empire State Grotto Association. I would certainly like to welcome all of you on behalf of our, of our members and our officers to our 2021 uh, Grotto Memorial Day program. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Grotto, um, Grotto is a Masonic organization. It's one of the many different bodies that a, that a man can belong to. Uh, one of the traditions that we have in Grotto is um, we honor um, our presidents who have passed on, if we have a president in our area, um, and certainly we do here with Franklin Roosevelt. Uh, Franklin Roosevelt was not only a very active Freemason, but he actually was a member of Tripovet Grotto all right, uh, in Poughkeepsie. All right? He became a uh, Grotto member when he was the governor of New York. All right? And actually, um, show me the picture. Oh, right here, I'm sorry. This is a picture of him. For you might, might want to come up and take a look at this. This is a picture of, of FDR becoming uh, a Grotto member uh, in the mid-1930s um, in the old Poughkeepsie Masonic Temple, which is on Cannon Street. The building is still there. Actually, the building was sold a few years ago. And uh, there's a picture of him. Actually, we actually have this chair, believe it or not, in Saugerties, New York, and it's being renovated. All right? And if you ever go to the FDR uh, <coughs> library, uh, presidential library and home in Hyde Park, um, they have all of FDR's Masonic uh, memorabilia, and you'll actually see one of these black fezzes, which is kind of neat, which is really, really a cool thing. So we're very excited that you're all here. There are a few people that we'd like to make sure that we introduce uh, very quickly. I'd like to all the past monarchs of Tripopet Grotto to please stand. And please introduce yourself. John? John Anderson. Uh, Bill Nugent. Dan Elliott. Mark Isaacs. Uh, these gentlemen, thank you, Jeff, thank you, brothers. These gentlemen are the ones who actually have led our grottos through the year. Um, over, over our, our, our grotto now is 100, 100 years old this year, quite frankly. So John was the first. John was the first. Okay, That's right. <laughs> <laughs> he's a he's a hundred seventy <laughs> over sixty. Uh, for uh, cattle. That is correct. I'd also like to introduce our Supreme Council District Deputy, uh, Prophet Dominic Falcone. Dominic uh, Dominic belongs to Azim Grotto, which means in New York City. They're one of the, the oldest grottos uh, in the United States. <coughs> <laughs> uh, they're actually number seven, uh, which is pretty pretty outstanding. They actually started in the Bronx. And what Dominic does is he makes sure that we're doing everything we're supposed to be doing from a Supreme Council uh, perspective. And he does a wonderful job, and we love him very much. He's a great guy. Um, I'd also like to introduce Malia Hanover. Malia, could you stand? Uh, Malia is part of our Masonic youth groups. Uh, Malia is the Grand Worthy Advisor for the State of New York. So this young lady leads all the activities for the International Order of the Rainbow for Girls. Um, she just got elected to that position. She's a wonderful young lady. We've seen her grow up. So try to see her up. And our guest speaker today is uh, someone who's, if, if you're involved in Freemasonry in the State of New York, uh, he's certainly uh, certainly someone everyone knows, and we're going to hear some, some words from him very soon. Uh, Brother Peter Samick, who is a 33rd degree Mason and representing the Northern Masonic Church. Uh, All right, at this time what I'd like to do is I'd like to introduce uh, Brother uh, Dominic Falcone uh, to lead us through the American's Creed. All rise. Follow along in your, uh, in your uh, bulletin and face toward the American flag as we read the American's Creed. Right. Thank you. The American's Creed, I believe in the United States of America as a government of the people, by the people, and for the people, whose just powers are derived from the consent of the government, a democracy and a republic, a sovereign nation of many sovereign states, a perfect union, one and inseparable, established upon those principles of freedom, equality, justice, and humanity, for which the American patriots have sacrificed their lives and fortunes. I therefore believe it is my duty to my country to love and support the Constitution, to obey its laws, to respect its flags, and to defend it against all enemies. On this Memorial Day, 
2021, we assemble to recall the memory of President Franklin D. <coughs> Roosevelt. For the past 70 or more years, we have met at the graveside of Franklin Roosevelt at the Roosevelt Estate in Hyde Park. This year, because of COVID and, in, and, and inclement weather, we're meeting here. Franklin Roosevelt was a member of Tribe Oped Grotto. He was also a member of Parkview Odd Fellows Lodge in Hyde Park. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was the 20 or 32nd President of the United States of America, a Commander-in-Chief of U.S. Armed Forces during the Second World War, 1941 to 1945. Franklin Delano Roosevelt served as Commander-in-Chief during this perilous struggle. He died in Warm Springs, Georgia, April 12, 1945, just as the war was ending. 2020, the coronavirus lockdown year, marked the 75th anniversary of FDR's death. Franklin Roosevelt, who led this nation through America's Great Depression, 1921 to 1941, is the only U.S. president to be elected four times. 1932, 1936, 1940, and 1944. In addition to serving as governor of the state of New York, 1929 to 1932, Franklin D. Roosevelt served our nation as Assistant Secretary of Navy during the Woodrow Wilson administration, 1913 to 1921. While Navy Secretary Josephus Daniels dealt with policy and congressional matters, Franklin D. Roosevelt dealt with critical personnel, procurement, and operational issues. His energetic, energetic efforts in the Department of Navy served the overall, overall war effort during the First World War and led to the ultimate success of the United States Navy during this conflict. Last year, 2020, again, the COVID lockdown and cancellation year, in addition to remembering all soldiers and sailors and Marines who paid the ultimate price in all wars fought to preserve our liberties, today we need to commemorate and remember. Last year everything was canceled. It was the 75th anniversary of VE Day, the 75th anniversary of the death of FDR, the 75th anniversary of VJ Day, Victory in Japan, August 14, 1945. During America's Second World War, 1941 to 1945, the United States lost 418,500 men killed in action, including more than 110,000 men killed fighting in the Pacific Theater. Today, 76 years later, we gather here today to remember and to honor their ultimate sacrifice. Greater love hath no man than this, that he lays down his life for his friends. The Gospel of St. John, chapter 15, verse 13. On August 10, 1941, aboard the battleship HMS Prince of Wales, anchored off the coast of Newfoundland, British Prime Minister and Masonic brother Winston S. Churchill and President Franklin D. Roosevelt sang this hymn together during a joint Christian worship service. It is said that this service cemented the fraternal bond between Great Britain and the United States in the struggle to preserve Western civilization against, the, against fascism. Let us recall this moment today as we rise and sing Eternal Father Strong to Save, all four verses. Yeah. 
1944, in a nationwide radio address, President Franklin D. Roosevelt led our nation with this prayer. Almighty God, our sons, pride of our nation, this day have set upon a mighty endeavor, a struggle to preserve our republic, our religion, and our civilization, and to, free, and to set free a suffering humanity. Lead them straight and true, give them strength to their arms, stoutness to their hearts, and steadfastness in their faith. They will need thy blessings. Their road will be long and hard, for the enemy is strong. He may hurl back our forces. Success may not come with rushing speed, we shall return again and again, and we know that by thy grace, and by the righteousness of our cause, our sons will triumph. They will be sore tired by night and by day, without rest until the victory is won. The darkness will be rent by noise and flame. Men's souls will be shaken with the violence of war. For these men are lately drawn from the ways of peace. They fight not, they fight not for the lust of conquest. They fight to end conquest. They fight to liberate. They fight to let justice arise and tolerance and goodwill among all thy people. They yearn for the end of battle, for the return to the haven of home. Some, dear Lord, will never return. Embrace these, Father, and receive them, thy heroic servants, into the kingdom. With thy blessing, we shall prevail over the unholy forces of our enemy. Help us to conquer the apostles of greed and racial arrogance. Lead us to the saving of our country, with our sister nations into a world united that will spell a sure peace, a peace invaluable to the schemings of unworthy men, and a peace that will let all men live in freedom, reaping the just rewards of their honest toil. Thy will be done, Almighty God. Amen. Bob, before you sit down, please tell us about this framed prayer, the D-Day prayer. So uh, this D-Day prayer is actually something they used to sell in the FDR Presidential Library uh, Museum in the gift shop. And uh, when my son is an organization called the Order of Dee Malay, it's for young men. It's very similar to what Malia does in Rainbow, uh, for, and that's for young ladies, this is for young men. And my son, I have twin boys, uh, Ben and Greg. Um, when my son Greg was the master counselor, of, that's the leader of the chapter, uh, he said to me, I'd like to donate this to the grotto because I know how important it is to the men of grotto. So, um, he went out, he, he worked one summer, he bought the frame, he had it framed, and on the back, if you flip it over, um, we taped on the back um, who it was from and the association between D. Malay and Grotto, and uh, his name and my other son's name is on here, along with the other officer at the time, uh, along with myself, I was, the, I was the chapter dad. So we were very uh, honored to give this to the Grotto, and it's something that we keep in our, in our Grotto room, uh, up, up where the uh, monarch sits. Uh, we look at this to remind us not only of this day, but of Franklin Roosevelt, but more importantly that it was young men like my sons um, who actually did all the fighting, quite frankly, in World War II. They were young men, um, so we don't ever want to forget that. So that's why this, this D-Day prayer, prayer, quite frankly, is so important to us. Before we sit down, was your father involved in World War II? Yes, he was. My, uh, my dad was, um, he was a tank commander under Patton's Third Army. Um, he fought uh, uh, for several years. Um, uh, with, with Patton. Uh, he fought in the Battle of the Bulge. Uh, his tank ran over a landmine. He was the only one to live. Um, my father was a funeral director by trade, so after his tank exploded... It makes perfect sense to make him a tank commander. Pretty much, yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Metal box, what the heck. Right? Um, but uh, after he got hurt, he went to a field hospital, and uh, my dad laid in a field for a couple of hours. His feet were frozen, and they were going to cut his feet off. Uh, true story. And uh, actually, one of the guys in the aid station was a guy he grew up with in Brooklyn. Uh, and he said, don't worry. My father's nickname was Buddy. He says, Buddy, don't worry. We're going to save your feet. 
And uh, my father, he worked with a, this aide, he was a, he was a, I think he was a sergeant. He worked with a doctor, and the doctor saved my father's feet. Um, but my father went on to serve in the military for 31 years.